This is the Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind podcast, where divorce coach Corey Shapiro helps you get creative and not reactive in your divorce. Tune in now to get the support you need to make it through this difficult time. Here's your divorce coach, Corey Shapiro. Welcome to the Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind podcast. This is Corey Shapiro. I'm your friendly divorce coach. I'm recording out of my office in New York City. We're in August. For some reason, it is cool summer weather. It is great. And what's on my mind? Well, our topic today is prenuptial agreements. Yeah, those are the agreements we enter into before we get married to clarify issues. That's when our minds are not only in the clouds. We're not thinking this is going to last for life. We are realistic. And that's what prenups are for. And let me just dispel one myth before we get going. It's totally romantic. It's totally romantic, a prenuptial agreement, if it's done right. If you do it a day before you're getting married, not so good. But if you do it well in advance and you explain and have discussions, think this it's totally fine to do it. Uh, I want to direct you to a book you know I love to read, and I have a great book if you're early in the prenuptial agreement process. It's called Prenup for Lovers. It's by uh, Arlene Dubin, who was one of the, the best prenuptial agreement lawyers. She literally specialized in prenuptial agreements in New York. I had an opportunity to work with her, and she reminded me of like the way she negotiates. She's like a grandma who always gets her way, but doesn't make you feel bad. That's what she and I and I did this when I was a very young attorney, and I was loud and bombastic and tried to get everything by her. And she just like hushed me up and said, like, you know, dear, 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 we we just do things differently. And I have to say, I ask it's an aspiration to negotiate like her. So I would suggest reading her book if you really want to do a deep dive uh, on prenuptial agreements. All right. So who's our quote from? It's from one of the masters, Jim Collins. He writes a lot about management. His book, uh, his quote is, greatness is not a function of circumstance. Greatness, it turns out, is a matter of conscious choice and discipline. Every time I hear that word discipline, I think of Jocko. I think he trademarked, you know, discipline equals freedom. And it's about habits. It's about realizing that our reactions are probably going to be wrong. And we're going to have to have discipline to change our habits. And the discipline comes from just doing the habits repeatedly. And I think that's really a great quote from Jim Collins. Okay, our question is from Greta. And if you want to ask a question for the Getting Divorced uh, podcast, you can go to gettingdivorced.org. You can submit your question, and hopefully we can answer it on this podcast. All right. The question is, my family have been recommending that I consider a prenuptial agreement. My soon-to-be spouse and I, who have been dating for around three years, have similar salaries. However, I have more assets due to family wealth. Would you be able to provide some guidance on aspects I should contemplate while thinking about a prenuptial agreement? Well, Greta, that's a lot of prenuptial agreements I get where there is similar incomes, but family money is dictating the parents to come in and want to protect that family wealth. So I think this is a good thing to think about. And let me just give you a couple ideas, a couple of ideas. First of all, you want to definitely have attorney review. Definitely want to have attorney review. You could go on a a website. You can get a a boilerplate, quote unquote, just means a very standard agreement. Okay, it's not rocket science. This is not reinventing the real. The big point is, did you get attorney review? Because are you aware of the rights you're giving up? That's the whole key. You're like buying protection. So you need attorney review, even if you do it on the cheap, even if you do an agreement you found on the web, okay? Uh, Also, another big thing I see is for some reason in these agreements, they don't define terms, okay? Matrimonial attorneys, 
Here's a little secret. We're not the best legal drafters. Probably corporate attorneys are. But we borrow from corporate attorneys. And if you look at a corporate agreement, everything's defined. So they don't mess around in commercial contracts, commercial litigation. Everything needs to be defined. So we just borrow that and we define two important terms. Two important terms. One, separate property. What separate property? We'll get into that a little bit. And what's marital property? You define that, you're going a long way in getting a good prenup. First of all, what is separate property? These are the assets I want to keep separate, mine, in case we get divorced. Now, you're saying, well, my family wealth would just be separate. The issue is, in a lot of states, once you get married, whatever is acquired during the marriage, even the appreciation of separate property could be marital. So if you had an account, separate property account, your family gave you a million dollars, a million dollars is in a brokerage account. Okay, at the day of the marriage. But then when you get divorced, it's now 10 million. That 9 million gain could be considered marital subject to division unless you define it in the prenuptial agreement. See, now you're realizing why hiring an attorney is not that big of an expense. It's really an investment because you're protecting your separate property. You also want to define marital property. And the biggest dis uh, discussion I have with people who are doing this is do you want a traditional marriage where everything that's acquired during the marriage, except for separate property, if it's linked to separate property, is marital. That's a traditional marriage. Or do you want something more like title controls? We're going to do our own thing. We're going to custom our own type of marriage. And you want to define that as marital property. You don't have to follow the state law. So those are the two big things. One little side point I'll let you know. A lot of times what happens is people buy homes. People buy homes in, in, a, in a marriage, especially if they're going to have children. And if you put separate property into the home as a down payment, is that considered uh, marital or do you get that money back as a credit? I would define that as well. Okay, another big thing that you need to think about is division. Division of marital property. In some states... It's equitable, meaning it's not equal, not necessarily equal. A lot of times in a prenuptial agreement, you could say marital property is divided equally. It's divided pro rata uh, for income and make it very simple. And the last thing I think you really want to think about is cash flow. These are the waiver of spousal support, waiver of attorney fees, uh, if you want to think about those things. So I think this is a good start, Greta to get you going on a prenuptial agreement. I also hope you do this well in advance. Uh, some states, I think, do have timeframes. A lot of states don't. What I suggest, if you want to be top of the class, before announcements go out. Before announcements go out for your wedding, you do it. But a lot of people do it three, six, nine months in advance. That's, I think, okay. But if you're in a month before the marriage and you have a big date coming up, it just is overwhelming, even if the prenup is enforced. You want to be thinking about your wedding. You don't want to be thinking about lawyer stuff. It is a legal relationship, but come on. It's really, really primarily a romantic relationship, especially in the beginning uh, when everyone's happy. All right, so let's move to divorce news. And I'm, I'm trying to make the divorce news uh, similar to our question, a similar topic. And I don't know if you remember, but Tom Brady was in the news about his divorce with his prenup. What I heard was ironclad prenup, ironclad prenup. They had an ironclad prenup. And I'm, going to, I'm just going to break the news to you. There is no ironclad prenup. I mean, they never challenged a prenup. Uh, they they uh, were both very wealthy. <laughs> they both put their children first. And I would say, in my world, an ironclad prenup is 99.7% ironclad. But there's always that 0.3%, always that 0.3%. And even if that prenup, after uh, challenging it, is upheld, is sustained, who wants to go through all this litigation? So realize this, there's no ironclad prenup. The simple thing I tell people is an agreement is only as good as the person you enter into it with, 
But at the end of the day, you can make it more enforceable than not. And that's the whole point of these prenups. All right, what's our positive perspective? Well, do we believe in life insurance? Yes. Do we believe in wearing seatbelts? Yes. Well, then we believe in downside protection. We realize that a marriage may not go the way we want. And if we want downside protection, we get a prenuptial agreement. Okay. In closing, listen, if this podcast resonates with you and you're enjoying the content, you may enjoy our monthly newsletter where we give out tips and strategies for how to get divorced without losing your mind. Remember, stay creative, not reactive. Thank you for tuning in to the Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind podcast with divorce coach Corey Shapiro. Divorce can be a difficult and overwhelming process, but it doesn't have to be. Corey's book, Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind, is here to help you gain clarity, composure, and a strategic mindset. Get it now as an ebook on Amazon or an audiobook on Audible and unlock the power of these resources to make more informed decisions and gain better understanding of the process. This podcast offers general information only. It cannot replace legal advice. If you need tailored advice, contact an attorney licensed to practice in your area. Mm-hmm.